destroy the works of Satan in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for those on the awakening of glory that your blood will cover them, O oh Lord. That you will bring them here to fellowship with us safely in the name of Jesus. May your spirit take over. May your spirit take charge. May your spirit dwell in this atmosphere. We destroy every plans of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we commit the worship team into your hands. We commit the men of God into your hands, King of Glory, that Lord, you will use them for your glory, for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that your spirit will hover this place, King of Glory, and destroy everything of the enemy. And we pray, oh God, that we shall not leave you the same. Let our hearts receive everything that you have for us. We thank you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. is glorious. Amen. Let's sing the song of glorious to him. Come on, let's praise him. Come on. Come on, let's see hands. Sing this out. Yes. Yeah. 
Just lift up the name 
salvation from our heart. salvation from our heart. So let us give the worship and the glory that he deserves. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of all glory. Let us reflect on what he has done for us. His goodness and his mercy and his kindness and who he is. King of all glory, I come before you to exalt your name, to lift your name high, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, Lord, because when I was in deception, oh Lord, you brought me into the truth, oh Lord. I did not deserve to come to the truth. I did not deserve to come to the light, but it is all by your mercy, all by your grace. There is nothing that I could have ever done, and there shall never be anything that I can do to earn your mercy, to earn your grace, to earn your presence. So I give you the glory, I give you the honor, I praise your name, because you do it out, all out of the love that you have for us, out of the love that you had for your creation I give you the glory oh Lord because you easily could have kept us in our sin you easily could have kept us condemned to hell but yet you chose to send your one and only begotten son to die for us so that we may believe in him so that we can repent and turn from our ways and turn to you Lord so that we can be reconciled and have a true relationship with you so I give you the glory my father I give you the glory Lord Jesus because there is nothing I could have done to earn your love there is nothing I could have done to earn your mercy there is nothing I could have done to be in this place right now so I honor and I glorify your holy name thank you Jesus thank you Lord for you are mighty and you are holy you are my redeemer you are my savior you are my father and you are the prince of peace you are my counselor and you are wonderful I exalt your name Lord I lift your name high above anything else oh God because your name is the name above every other name the name to which every knee shall bow down the name to which every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Let us continue to lift up his name. Let us continue to worship him in our own words. Give him the praise and the glory that he deserves for all that he has done in our lives. For he has done so much that you and I do not deserve. It is all by his mercy, all by his goodness, all by his kindness. So let us give him the glory. Let us give him the worship. Let us give him the adoration, the exaltation that he deserves. For no one in this place, no one in this world could have done what he has done. Not your mother, not your father, not your boss at work, not your friends or not your family. Not even your wife or your husband. What Jesus did what no man could do. He came and paid the price of sin on your behalf. So that you could have eternal life. So that you can say that you are free on this day. So let us give him the glory. Let us give him the exaltation. Let us not let this room get quiet. Because the angels are in heaven. They are day and night. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The one who is, who was, and who is to come. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of all glory. Because you did not program me just to worship you, oh Lord. But you gave me the choice and on this day I choose to worship you oh God Lord because you have done so much for me that I did not deserve oh Lord you have shown your love to me oh God and even you, you even reveal your presence unto us oh God Lord you being holy and us being full of sin you still reveal yourself you still reveal your glory I give you the glory I give you the honor I praise your name Jesus thank you almighty God even if it is a simple thank you if it, even if it is a simple to say he is holy get, let him know who he is let him know who he is to and what he has done for you and that you are grateful that you are that you are grateful for what he has done and for what he is yet to do thank you jesus thank you oh lord thank you my father because you made him who knew no sin to become sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of god in you thank you lord thank you almighty god hallelujah at this moment let us go into a place of repentance when we turn, when we go before the Father and we let him know what it is that we have done and let him know that we truly want to turn away from these things and we want to turn to him. Many people think that repentance is a punishment, but in reality, it is a gift. In the book of Psalms, chapter 32, verse 1 and 2, it says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. It is a blessing for our sins to be covered by the Lord. It is a blessing for our sins to be forgiven by the Lord, our transgressions to be forgiven by the Lord. So at this moment, let us go before him and ask for his mercy, ask for his forgiveness, and truly repent from what it is that we have done or what it is that we are still doing that does not glorify him. The things that we know that do not glorify him. Only you and him know what it is that you have done. Only you and him know what it is that you still have in your heart, who it is that you still have in your heart, who you have not forgiven. There 
is mercy available to you. There is grace available to you. All you must do is go before him and confess it with your mouth. Confess it with your mouth what it is that you have done that has not pleased him. Who it is that was in your heart who you have not forgiven. Because the Bible says that if we cannot forgive, how can our Father in heaven forgive us? So let us go before him and ask for his mercy, ask for his forgiveness as we repent and as we turn away from our evil desires, from our evil ways. Even if it is simple stuff, no matter how simple it is, it's still serious to God. Lying, it might seem simple to us, but in the eyes of God is a very serious sin. Iniquity cannot be mixed with holiness, for God is holy. We have to go before him and ask for his mercy and repent and turn away from our ways. Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus to ask for your mercy, O oh God, as I repent and I turn away from my evil desires, Lord. My desires to be in the flesh, my desires to please this flesh more than to please the spirit. Lord, I ask that you have mercy, O oh God, all that time that I spent on my phone, all that time that I spent on the TV, rather than spending in your word, rather than spending in your presence. All those days that I spent sleeping in, O oh God, instead of waking up early to go and meet with you, O oh God. I I ask that you have mercy on me. I ask that you forgive me, O oh Lord, as I turn away from these evil desires. And as I turn to your will, as I turn to your presence, Almighty God, that you may show me mercy, that you may forgive me of my sins, that you may forgive me of my iniquity, that my sins may be covered, O oh Lord. King of all glory, I come before you to ask for your mercy, to ask for your forgiveness for the things that I've said with my mouth that have not pleased you, the things that I've looked with my eyes that have not pleased you, O oh God, the things that I've filled this temple with that have not pleased you, O oh Lord. King of all glory, that you may have mercy that you may forgive me, O oh Lord, that I may turn away from these things, that I may fill myself with the things that will glorify your name, that I may do and do things that will glorify your name, Almighty God. Lord, I ask that you have mercy on me. Lord, I ask that you forgive me from my lying tongue. Lord, from my unclean lips. Lord, from these ears that hear the iniquity of the that hear the unclean things, that hear the lies, the blasphemy, the cursed words, oh God. Lord, these eyes that have seen the unclean things, that have seen, oh Lord, with murder, that have looked with murder, King of all glory, that have looked with hatred, I ask that you have mercy on these eyes that have lusted and committed adultery in the heart. Lord, I ask that you have mercy on this heart, which have meditated on the things which are evil, that have murdered, committed adultery, oh Lord, that have meditated on the things of the world rather than the things of the spirit. Lord, that you may have mercy on us, that you have mercy on our hearts, have mercy on our minds for the things that we think that do not glorify you. Lord, may you have mercy on us as we've come before you, as we've confessed with our mouth what it is that we have done that has not brought you glory. May you forgive us, my Lord. At this moment, let us call upon the blood of Jesus. Because yes, we have confessed with our mouth what it is that we have done. Yes, we have been forgiven. But without the blood of Jesus, our sins cannot be washed away. Our, our, our garments cannot be made clean. So we need the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus himself even said, this is my blood that was shed for the remission of your sins. So at this moment, let us call upon the blood of Jesus to wash us clean. To make us new. To wipe away every sinful act. Every sinful deed that we have committed. Wherever they still have records in the kingdom of darkness of our sinful deeds. Let us call upon the blood of Jesus to wash it all away, that they have nothing to accuse us with, that when they go into the courtroom of heaven, that the enemy has nothing to accuse us with. So right now, let us call upon the blood of Jesus to wash us clean. Jesus, I call upon your blood to begin to wash me clean, to begin to sanctify me, to be make, begin to make me new, that everything that is not of you, O oh God, let your blood begin to wash it away. Let your blood begin to destroy every evil deposit, O oh God, that comes from the kingdom of darkness, Lord. Let your blood begin to destroy and dismantle, that those seeds may not take root, O oh God, but let them be destroyed, that those, whatever it has taken root, O oh God, let those roots be uplifted by your blood in the name of Jesus. Lord, I call upon your blood to begin to wash us all clean from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Let your blood begin to wash our hearts clean. Let your blood begin to wash our eyes clean. Let your blood begin to wash our ears and our mouth and our tongues clean, oh God. That Lord, in your eyes, we, that you may not see the sin that we have committed, but you may see the blood of Jesus that is upon us, my Father. Jesus, I call upon your blood to begin to make us new, to begin to make us white as snow, to begin to make us as wool. That Lord, no iniquity, no transgression be found on the inside of us, but Lord, only the blood of Jesus be found on the blood that makes us whiter is whiter than snow. The blood that makes us whiter than wool. Let us call upon the blood. Let us call upon the blood of Jesus to make us new, to make us whole, to purify us, to sanctify us, to set us apart. That we may not look like the world, but that we may look like the Father. That we may look like Jesus. King of all glory, we need your blood. 
we need your blood for it is only your blood that makes us new it is only your blood that gives us life it is only your blood that can heal us it is only your blood that can deliver us it is only your blood that can set us free so we call upon your blood in this hour we call upon your blood in this moment to make us new to set us free to heal us from every infirmity everything that is not of you oh god to break every chain every bondage to destroy every bloodline curse and to destroy every generational curse oh god that we shall not be like our fathers we shall not be like our mothers but that we shall be like you jesus that we shall carry your image oh lord that we shall truly be ambassadors of christ king of all glory let your blood begin to wash us clean let your blood begin to sanctify us let your blood begin to make us new make us whole and reconcile us back onto the father moment as we've called upon the mercy of God as we have been forgiven and as we have been washed by the blood of Jesus let us begin to call upon the Holy Spirit because we cannot continue without the Holy Spirit there is a war flesh against the spirit and the spirit must prevail if we allow the flesh to prevail we will go back to our vomit we'll go back to our old ways we'll go back to the things that we have just repented of so uh, that is why we are so in need of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit will give us new desires the Holy Spirit will give us a new heart a new mind. The Holy Spirit will set our eyes on heaven and not on the things of this earth. So at this moment, let us call upon the Holy Spirit that He come and fill us, that He come and truly enter us, that He come and truly take over us, that we no longer be of ourselves, but we belong to the Lord. For the Bible says that we have been purchased at a price, that price being the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So let us call upon the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I ask that you come in this place, that you come and take over spirit that we no longer be of ourselves holy spirit but that we may reflect jesus in all that we do even if we are not surrounded by other people holy spirit that we may reflect jesus even in the secret place oh god where no one else can see us even out when we go out and about and do our day oh lord no one in the church is around us holy spirit but you are still looking holy spirit that we may still reflect jesus in that moment that in that moment oh lord when there are people in need when there is someone who is whose soul is dying holy spirit that you give us the utterance to speak and proclaim the name of jesus christ to speak and proclaim the good news of jesus christ that he offers salvation freely to those that call upon him holy spirit come and enter us holy spirit come and take over us that we no longer belong to ourselves that we may no longer do what we desire that we may no longer live for ourselves but that we may live for jesus that everything that we do be for jesus that each and every day when we wake up it be to the glory of jesus holy spirit help us that we no longer belong to ourselves that we no longer think of ourselves but we may think of others before ourselves holy spirit help us to take away every selfish desire every desire from the kingdom of darkness every desire from the flesh that we may turn away from our vomit and turn to you turn to the glory of god that we may turn to the presence holy spirit help us holy spirit help us take us deeper holy spirit take us deeper bring us closer to the lord bring us closer to the father bring us closer to you holy spirit reveal unto us the things that we do not know holy spirit holy spirit renew a new spirit on the inside of us give us a new spirit a new desire a new yearning a new heart holy spirit that we may no longer be comfortable holy spirit but that we may be that we may rejoice in our uncomfortability that we may rejoice in our uncomfortability when it brings you glory holy spirit take over all of us in this place transform all of us in this place that we no longer be of ourselves but our lives truly be to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ that our lives truly reflect the Lord Jesus Christ Holy Spirit help us all in this place for if anyone in this place says they do not need you they are a liar for we all need you in order to serve Jesus Holy Spirit I come before you in the name of Jesus I pray Holy Spirit that you may open each and every heart in this place to receive each and every mind in this place to understand and to maintain what is to be what is to be given on this day holy spirit that we leave this place transformed that we not leave this place the same way that we walked in that whatever is not of you it must be left at the door whatever old desire whatever old ways it will die in this night holy spirit i even pray for the man of god that is to teach tonight holy spirit that it be you speaking through him and not of himself that we may truly receive a word of transformation that we may truly receive the word of God on this day. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let us give glory unto God for what he has done in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Come on.
on, we can do better than that. Come on, come on, come on. Lift his name high. Come on, celebrate the name of Jesus. Come on, celebrate the name of Jesus. Come on, do I have any believers in this place that love Jesus? Celebrate the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, come on, I can't hear you. Come on, celebrate the name of Jesus. Come on, open up your mouth and just celebrate the name of Jesus. How many of y'all believe that there is power in his name? Come on, I can't hear you. How many of y'all believe that there is power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Listen, we don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. Oh, come on. Am I talking to somebody in this place? We don't serve a dead God, but we serve a living God. Last time I checked on the third day, the Bible says that he resurrected. So he's no longer dead, but he is alive. So I'm celebrating the name of Jesus because I know that Calvary couldn't hold him. I know that the ground couldn't hold him. Come on, somebody, you could come on, somebody, celebrate his name that he is alive. He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. closed mouth don't get fed amen when you're in the presence of God you got to know how to open up your mouth and receive what God has for you amen somebody amen somebody praise the Lord hallelujah you may be seated amen welcome 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 each and every person is in this place amen we welcome you guys to generation rise up amen Y'all excited to be here? Come on now, y'all excited to be here? Amen, amen. I'm, I'm seeing new faces, amen. Amen, welcome to Generation Rise Up. We're here Wednesdays at 7, 7 p.m. And Sundays we're here at 1 p.m., amen. Amen. Woo. How many of y'all ready for the conference? Y'all ready for the conference? I am super excited for this conference. It's going to be powerful. I am believing God to do mighty, mighty thing in this conference. Amen. Uh, we've been uh, talking about it, but let me tell y'all, tomorrow is the conference. <laughs> Amen. So we've been preparing for it. We've been talking about it. And so we're getting ready to experience something mighty tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Uh, we, we have speakers that, that flew from Hawaii, uh, from Florida, from all different places just to be here. So I want you guys to be in this place tomorrow if you can. Amen. It's going to be three days. We're going to be here three days. And I don't want you to miss. Amen. I believe God has something for you. Amen. Amen. And amen. Friday, min <laughs> Friday midnight prayer. We're here, um, but we're not going to have it this Friday because of the conference, but we usually have Friday midnight prayer here uh, with Apostle Simon and the team. Uh, if you're not doing nothing those days, I, I want you to come and pray. Amen. How many of y'all believe more prayer, more power? Uh, talk back to me now. How many of y'all believe more prayer, less prayer? Amen. Amen. I believe in war in the spirit. So we come here and we just pray until the Lord says it's done. Amen. Amen. This moment we're going to give on to the Lord. Can we prepare our offering as we give on to the Lord? Our brother Luis is here. For those that do need an envelope, just raise your hands. Just wave your hands and our brother Luis will come to you. But there's many ways you could give in a house. Uh, you could give... For those that are watching us online, you can go to 
gruchurch.com slash donate. Or you can write a check to Generation Rise Up Ministry. Amen. It even gets better. You can scan the QR code. Or you can zill to that number right there. Amen. But here at GRU, we like to give God our offering with praise. Amen. I believe giving God with praise. Amen. So we're going to all stand up. And we're going to bless the house of the Lord with praise. Amen. presence, Father. And Father God, I pray, Father, for each and every person that's in this place, for those that came forth, Father, for those that blessed your kingdom, for the advancement of your kingdom, Father. For Father, I believe whatever leaves their hands never leave their life, Father. And Father, I'm declaring, oh God, that you'll begin as they release, Father, you will open up the floodgates of heaven, Father, and you will continue to pour in more and more over their life, Father. I even pray for those that are in this place that couldn't give, Father. That you will also open up doors in their life, Father. 
so that they can become givers into your kingdom. Father, we cover this offering in your blood. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we all say amen and amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to take this moment and just welcome newcomers. If today is your first time in the midst of us, we just, we want to welcome you. We just want you to tell us everything about you. I mean, where you from, where you were born, you know, how tall you are, what's your social security. I mean, we want to be all up in your business, like everything. Now I'm playing, I'm playing. Yeah, if you could stand and just tell us where you from and who invited you. We want to love on you today. Amen. Amen. I promise I won't bite. I promise. Um, my name is Kina Satterfield. Um, I'm from Ermolo, Texas. Um, this is my son, Carson. You said it was Kina? Kina. Kina? Kina. Kina. Okay. Um, who invited you? China Bryson. China. Come on, let's give up. Give God the glory for China. Hey, Amen. You know, we, I remember uh, we was in Arkansas. We, we went with China, and she was telling me, she said, Pastor, I'm going to get my whole family here. <laughs> she said, I'm going to get my whole family here. My sister, I'm getting them all here. Hey, Amen. Can we clap our hands one more time? <laughs> glory, 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 glory. Amen. Who else first time in this place? Amen. My name is Austin Evans. Um, Miss Deja Bell invited me tonight. And uh, born and raised here in Dallas. Been serving the Lord for the past two years and happy to be here. Come on. Can we celebrate Jesus? Celebrate Jesus. Hey, can we, GRU, can we welcome them? Can we just love on them right now? Take this moment to just love on them and, and tell them they could have been anywhere at any place, but they chose to be here at the right place. Come on, let's love on them. Tell them, hey, you stuck with us now. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. We welcome, we welcome you guys. Amen. To Generation Rise Up. I see my sister back there, Bianca. Can we clap our hands for Bianca? A mighty woman of God. Evangelist for the nation. Amen. Amen and amen. Listen, I'm excited for the word. Amen. I, how many of y'all believe one word changes everything? You don't need a lot of words, just one word. Amen. And it changes everything. So I believe that there is a word from the Lord. And I'm so excited to receive this word. Amen. I'm so, so excited to receive this word. And I know it's going to bless you guys. Amen. So if you guys can just help me as I welcome, you know. I tell people this because I like to brag on Jesus because Jesus could take you from anywhere to something. Amen, somebody. How many of y'all believe that Jesus could pick you up from your mess and just transform you and, and use you for his glory? Y'all believe that? Come on now. Y'all should have celebrated Jesus a little louder than that, that he could take you from a place where you... 
listen, how many of y'all know that Jesus ain't looking for perfect people? But Jesus is looking for willing people. Because if you're willing, he is able. Come on, somebody. If you are willing, he is. My God. I need to get this mic off of my hands. I feel the Holy Ghost. My God of Zion. I need to get this mic off of my hands. I feel a shift in the atmosphere. I feel the Holy Ghost doing something. I feel a story in the spirit. My God of Zion. Amen, somebody. Listen, I just want y'all for like 10 seconds and just pull on the Holy Ghost for 10 seconds because I believe the Holy Ghost has a word for somebody in this place. I truly believe it. Amen. So if you're excited in this place, help me welcome our very own, own Andy as he come and bless us. Come on, celebrate. Hallelujah. Who's excited to be here today? I don't know about you, but I am excited to receive the word. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands for Jesus in this place. Come on, you can do better than that. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is in this place. He is our Messiah, our Savior, our Redeemer. Come on, you can do better than that. He is worthy to be praised. He gave you the breath of life. He woke you up this morning. He has allowed you to see another day. It is only by His grace and by His mercy that we are all here gathered in His name. His word says that we're two or three are gathered in His name. He is in our midst, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is here in this place. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You are able to partake of that freedom. You are able to enter into His presence. You are able to receive of His living word only because of His love toward you, only because of His mercy and His grace upon your life. Amen. Let's, let's clap our hands for Jesus. Let's give a big shout of praise to our King, to our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Jesus, you are worthy. Jesus, you are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to worship him at this moment. We're going to lift him high. We're going to exalt him above our situation, above our circumstance. For he is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be honored. He is worthy to be lifted high. There is no situation or circumstance that can change the way he thinks about you. There is nothing that you can go through that will change the love that he has for you. And he is worthy to be worshipped. He is worthy to be lifted high. Hallelujah. Let's all sing in one accord. Hallelujah.
clap our hands for Jesus. Come on, you can do better than that. Clap your hands for Jesus. God is so amazing. Jesus is wonderful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's one of my favorite worship songs, Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we begin, I want to give where honor where honor is due. If we can all clap our hands for my spiritual mother, Mama Seraphine, my spiritual father, Papa Joseph. They have done so much for this ministry. They have laid down their lives for the sake of Jesus Christ. And because of their sacrifice, because of their prayers, because they have stood in the gap, I am here today only by God's grace and mercy. And I thank God for their lives. I thank them because I can call them my parents, my spiritual parents, someone who I can go to for guidance, someone who I can go to for counsel. Let's clap our hands for them one more time. They have done so much for every single one of us. Hallelujah. Also, we can clap our hands for the leaders of the house. Uh, Pastor Glody is here. Let's clap our hands for Pastor Glody. I honor Pastor. Truly, he has taught me so many things. And I just honor him for the leader he has been. God has placed him in our lives to counsel us, to guide us. He is, he is the shepherd of the sheep. Amen. Let's clap our hands one more time. Hallelujah. Also, our very own, he's not here with us today, but Prophet Mike, the prophet of the nations. Come on, you guys can do better than that. Let's clap our hands for Prophet Mike. Prophet Mike has a heart of gold. My God. Everything that he has done for this ministry, his sacrifice, his prayers, the way he gives to people, it's such an honor to, to know him as, as a prophet, to know him as one of my leaders. Amen. Also, we can clap our hands for Apostle Simon. Apostle Simon, he has done so much for the church. I thank God for the leaders that God has placed in, in our lives. It's such a blessing. It's such an honor and a privilege. Amen. Also, we can clap our hands for Evangelist Jonathan as well. Evangelist Jonathan. He always puts a smile on my face because he's so radical. He loves to just preach the gospel. He loves to proclaim the word and it just stirs up a fire within me. I love, I love all my leaders, my spiritual parents, everyone in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. And if we can clap our hands for ourselves for being here today. Hallelujah. Because you took time out of your day to be here today to receive the word of God. You could have been anywhere else, but you made the decision to be here. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So before we begin, I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we'll get into the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Father in heaven, I ask you to decrease me so that you may increase in the name of Jesus. Father, let it be less of me and more of you, O God. For this has nothing to do with me, but everything to do with you, Father. This is for your glory. This is for your will to be accomplished and fulfilled. Father, I ask, O God, that you touch the hearts of your people. Let not the hearts of your people be hardened, Father. But I ask that you soften their hearts, O God, that they may be able to receive that which you have for them, Father. Whatever it is, Father, whatever expectation they came here with, Father, let them receive that which they expect, Father name of Jesus Christ, whether it is financial breakthrough, oh God, whether it is deliverance, freedom, or liberty, Father, in any area of their lives, Father. Oh God of Abraham, your word says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Allow us to partake of that freedom, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Even as I stand up here, Father, allow me to receive even what you have for me, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, let your presence and your glory and your light fill this place, oh Father. I ask you, oh God, to pour out your spirit upon us, righteous God. I ask that you help us to focus on your word, Father, to help us receive your word with all of our hearts. Let your word be written in the tablets of our hearts. Let your word marinate in our hearts. Let your word bring forth impact into our hearts, O oh God, that we may be changed and transformed, that we may become the men and women of God that you have created us to be, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, let mighty angels who are sent in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ be assigned to every corner of this place, Father, 
let every power of darkness everything that the enemy has planned to hinder the word from coming forth father let it be dismantled by the powerful blood of jesus christ father let this place be flooded by the blood of jesus let every wall every ceiling every floor every window every object every door be covered in the blood of jesus christ i decree and declare that no darkness shall reign in this place no darkness shall step foot in this place in the name of jesus christ of nazareth father in heaven let your holy spirit take over me let your holy spirit speak through me father let it not be i who speak it but let it be your holy spirit O oh god for if i speak my words will fall but if the holy spirit speaks your words will remain O oh father in the name of jesus christ to you belongs all the glory all the honor and the praise in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. I'm excited for this word. And I believe that this word is going to open your eyes. And it's going to help you understand what we go through as believers in Jesus Christ. Amen. So it is very necessary and very important to pay attention to the word because not only will I be preaching, but I will also be teaching. It's a mix of both. Amen. Because I've heard it said before, you can preach for five hours and you can teach for five hours. And the person whom you teach to will receive a lot more than the person you preach to. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want to begin by telling you a story about a young woman. Now, this young woman, as she was growing up, she lived a, a life of innocence, of purity. She didn't get into trouble. Uh, she would always stay away from, from bad friends. She would stay away from these certain situations that perhaps could go against her lifestyle. And as she was growing up, she was excelling in her grades at school. You know, she was very, very intelligent. And she would get good grades and she would pretty much move forward in this area of her life and as she was growing up she ended up going to college and by the time she stepped into college she was introduced to drugs and alcohol and so because of the introduction of these things she began to experiment with these things now keep in mind her parents they raised her up in a good home she was raised up in a good home her, uh, her parents had good jobs and they were taking care of her like any parent would. Now, as she was in college, she began to dive deeper into these drugs and abusing alcohol. There were nights where she would go party. She would get drunk out of her mind. And she would give her body for sexual things. She would end up fornicating with men time and time again simply to feed that emptiness in the inside of her. And she was introduced and exposed to all of these things. And it became an addiction. It became something that she wasn't able to let go of with her own strength. Amen. So as she was growing up, as she was getting older, and the more years passed by, she dove deeper and deeper into drugs. First, it started with alcohol and smoking. But then it ended up going to heroin and use of meth. Very heavy drugs to the point where it would distort her mind. To the point where she was no longer able to think for herself that intelligence that she once had that success that that passion that she once had was fading away because of these things that she was taking so the time came that when her parents started to notice that she began to lose her light you know you can look at somebody and and just see this light this brightness like you see this peace over them like they're in the right mind right so the time came where her parents noticed that she had bags under her eyes. She looked very depressed or oppressed. That, that smile, that, that light went away because of all of these things that she would take, all of this substance abuse. And so the time came where she was diagnosed with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Many of you know that schizophrenia or bipolar disorder is a mental health disorder. It's something very severe to the point where you can no longer think straight. In fact, there's rare cases of this that people say they see things, they hear things, they hear voices. So you have to understand that this person, this, this young lady was very successful in everything she did. She would prosper at school. 
And then now she's in a place where she is out of her mind and can no longer think for herself. She can no longer help herself. And as time went on, she began to see things and she began to hear voices like whispers. First it started with oppression and then it moved on to depression. To the point where she was having nightmares every single night. Very horrible nightmares where she would hear demons come to her and say, You are not worthy. You are ugly. Kill yourself. You, you, you don't belong here. You don't have purpose. You don't have destiny. We have you. You belong to us. And she would hear these things constantly and constantly. It was a battle in her mind. It was something that she couldn't stop or control. It was a constant thing. And so she began to get tired of these voices that she was hearing. She began to get tired of these dark figures that she would see. Because everyone else would look at her and say she's out of her mind. But they didn't understand the things she would see. They didn't understand the things she, she would hear. Only herself, only she would be able to understand what she was experiencing. And as time went on, she would find herself having manic episodes to the point where you completely black out. You are no longer in control of yourself. You are no longer aware of what's truly going on around you to the point where it's no longer you who's in control, but something else has taken control of her. So she would go to the kitchen. She would open up the drawer in the middle of the night. She would take some knives and take him to her bedroom. And the knives, she would put him in her drawer in her bedroom. And she would write notes saying that she was going to kill herself. That she wanted to end her life because she couldn't handle the tormenting thoughts and the voices that she would hear. She didn't know what was wrong with her. Doctors couldn't help her. They took her to psych wards mental institutions hospitals the best doctors in the country but no one could help her out they would give her medicine but it would only suppress her even more they would give her pills but it wouldn't even bring answer or solution so then her mother went up to her room one day she opened up the drawer and she saw the knives and she saw a note that said i'm going to kill myself i'm tired of living like this i can't take it anymore at that very moment, the mother, being a believer in Jesus Christ, began to proclaim the word of God over her household. She began to proclaim the word of God over her own daughter. She did everything she could by proclaiming the word of God because she believed in it. But things kept on getting worse and worse. Nothing was changing. There was no solution. There was no answer. So the time came where her mother and father made the decision to get ready that one day their own daughter was going to take her life so they were prepared they got ready because they knew that it could have happened at any moment at any point in time she was about to kill herself so the time came where their daughter grabbed a knife it was in the middle of night in the midst of a manic episode as she was laying in the in the floor of her bathroom she took the knife and began to cut herself she began to cut her arm 40 times to the point where she, when she woke up when she snapped out of that manic episode she found herself in a pool of blood all around her and she began to say to herself why would I do this this is not me why am I doing this I wouldn't hurt myself like this so she got tired and after all this time her parents taking her to psych wards, mental institutions, doctors, physicians. No one could help her out. So they took her to a, a conference. Now this conference was hosted by a man of God by the name of Todd White. Many of you have heard of him. And this is a real story. Now they took her to this conference. And as she was sitting in the midst of the crowd... She said to herself, and she said to God, God, if you do not heal me this night, I'm going to kill myself. And that will be the end of it. So then Todd White did an altar call. And she felt something pulling on her. She felt something leading her to the altar. And she got up out of her seat and began to walk towards the altar. 
And as Todd White saw her approaching, he looked into her eyes and he saw a blank stare. He saw that this woman was severely demon possessed, that she was troubled in her mind. And the moment he looked at her, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And at that very moment, she began to scream and cry out from the top of her lungs. And demons began to come out of her mouth. Demonic spirits came flying out of her mouth. Screams that, that you could only hear in horror films. At the moment that those demonic spirits left her, she felt the love of God being poured unto her like never before. She said that she had never felt anything like it. It was such a love. It was like a liquid love that completely captivated her, that completely took her, that completely surrounded her. And for the first time in so many years, she felt peace in her mind. She was able to think straight. There were no more voices. There were no more nightmares, no more trouble, no more torment. Simply because she made the decision to approach the altar of God. And this leads me to the title of my message. The war between two kingdoms. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor the war between two kingdoms. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to start by reading in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 18. If we can all go to the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 18. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 18. If we can all stand for the reading of the word. Hallelujah. Now, it is very important to pay attention because this explains to us what it means to be at war between two kingdoms. Amen. Hallelujah. I read in the name of Jesus. Verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the, end, of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Let's clap our hands for the reading of the word. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 10 says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. What Paul is letting us know is that we can only be strong in the Lord. You cannot rely on your own strength. He says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In other words, it is Jesus who is able to give you strength. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Strength only comes from one source, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Be strong in him and in the power of his might. Not only will you find strength when you come to Jesus, not only will you find strength when you acknowledge Jesus Christ, but also consider the power of his might. Also consider that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That he is the Alpha and the Omega. He's above every spirit. He's above every power. His name is, is the name above every other name. 
The word of God says that at the mention of his name, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That is what it means to consider the power and the might of Jesus Christ, that he's above everything and anything and anyone. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In other words, receive strength from the Lord and consider his power and his might. That is what Paul is letting us know. Why? Because we cannot depend on our own strength. We cannot depend on the strength that we will obtain from other things or other people. Your strength only comes from Jesus Christ and Him alone. There is no other source to your strength. There is no other might or power to consider. Would you consider the power and the might of the enemy? Would you consider the power and the might of the men who rule this world? Would you consider the power and the might of the president? We can only consider and acknowledge the power and the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And he says here, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Paul is telling us that we must put something on. And he said the whole armor of God, why is it that we have to put on an armor? See, God knows that if we didn't need that armor, there would be no war. But because there is an armor, there is a war. Because there is an armor of God, there is a war in the spirit realm against your soul. Ever since the creation of this world, that ha there has been a war between light and darkness for your soul. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor of who? The whole armor of God, meaning that this armor comes only from. You can try putting on some different armor. You can try going to another source for your strength. You can try going to another source for your power or your might. But let me tell you that armor will be destroyed. But it is when you put on the full body armor of God that you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. It is only the armor of God that will give you the ability to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. Because the wiles of the devil hurt. They hurt. If, not, if they didn't hurt, you wouldn't need armor. Amen. Mm. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. For we do not wrestle Paul is talking to us. He's saying, for we, who is we? You and I, the believers in Jesus Christ, for you and I do not wrestle against flesh and blood. You have to understand that if a brother or a sister is angry with you, if they want to persecute you, if they want to harm you, you have to understand that your war is not against that person, but it is a spirit behind that person that influences him to be able to act out of character, to be able to get angry at you. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You and I, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Satan will not waste his resources on those who are not a threat to his kingdom. The reason why we wrestle not against flesh and blood, it is because you and I, we are a threat to his kingdom. If not, there wouldn't be a war. If not, there wouldn't be a battle. If not, there wouldn't be wrestling. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. There's another word that is highlighted to me. For we wrestle not. Wrestling. Wrestling is the most complex form of combat that there is. It, the, the word of God does not say for we do not box for, for we do not box the, the Bible doesn't say for we do not use MMA no the Bible says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood you have to understand that when it comes to wrestling there is an opposition and there is two forces that are at play 
and wrestling requires for you to use every part of your body every strength that you have everything that God has given you as a weapon you ought to use everything you can in order for you to wrestle in a wrestling match there is no winner there won't be a winner until the demons and the kingdom of darkness is thrown into the lake of fire but as long as we are here on this earth we will wrestle until the day that we are no longer here for the bible says those who endure to the end shall be saved what is that endurance it is wrestling with the enemy it is wrestling with demonic spirits it is wrestling with demonic entities for we wrestle not against flesh and blood wrestling requires all your strength it requires all your mind it requires all your efforts it requires every weapon that God has given you for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places Paul is letting us know what we wrestle against Paul is letting us know who our battle is against, what we are facing as believers in Jesus Christ. People in the world do not wrestle against these forces. Why? Because they don't belong to the kingdom of, of light. They belong to the kingdom of darkness. There's no need for them to put on that armor because they don't have a battle. They don't have a fight. But we need to put on the whole armor of God. Amen. against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. A principality is a high-ranked demon that governs in the heavenly places over territories, over regions. A lot of times in our daily lives, we might go through a city and we might find that there are many drugs and many, many abuse of these drugs being, being done throughout the city. People harming other people, committing crimes, a lot of shootings that are going on. There's a lot of death, a lot of things that are going on, a lot of crimes. Well, I want you to understand that there are principalities that are at play. Just like I said before that if a person gets angry at you, it is not them who get angry at you. It is the spirit behind them that operates through them so, to, so that they can get angry at you. In the same manner, there is a principality that governs over the territory, over the region, over the area, in order for there to be crime, in order for them, for people to be influenced to commit these things and do these things. And the Bible says that we wrestle against these principalities. The reason why we don't see revivals is because principalities have a hold of that region. Principalities have a hold of that location. But you and I are given the power and the authority, the full body armor of God to stand against those principalities. That we may see the move of God. That we may see the kingdom of God advance. But as long as those principalities remain in that rank, as long as those principalities remain there, believe me, it's going to be very hard to see the move of God against powers against the rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places <laughs> tomorrow we're having a conference who is the host of the conference mama seraphine the leaders of the house they're hosting the conference but the bible's letting us know that we wrestle against spiritual hosts of wickedness there are demonic spirits, demonic entities, high rank demons that host wickedness. Wickedness is more than evil. Wickedness is more than darkness. Wickedness is as bad as it gets. And the Bible's letting us know that there are hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. There are demons in the air. There are wicked spirits in the air that operate against us every single day, that operate against the people of this world every single day. See, you might go throughout your life, perhaps you go through the drive through and you go to Starbucks thinking everything is fine. You listen to some music, you're comfortable, you feel at peace. But little do you know that above your head, there is a war going on. Little do you know that there is a war going on for your soul. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God 
that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand Paul is letting us know how much of a battle this is how tough of a battle it is he is saying here therefore take up the whole armor of God the whole armor of God not just the helmet of salvation not just the breastplate of righteousness not just the belt of the truth but he's saying take up the whole armor of God that you may be that you may be able to withstand in the evil day he's saying that we're gonna have evil days if you think that this is rainbow and sunshine you have been lied to we're going to we're at war right now as we speak and having done all to stand having done all to stand meaning you have to put in all your effort meaning you have to put in all your strength all your might in order to stand in the evil day in order so that you won't fall in that day you have to give it your all that's why a lot of us as Christians as believers in Jesus Christ perhaps some of us are tormented at night perhaps some of us have dreams nightmares we are being attacked daily by the enemy but you wake up out of that attack you wake up out of that dream you say God have mercy and you fall back asleep but the Bible is telling us get up put on the full body armor of God and use all you have everything you can every tool every weapon every strength every fiber in your body to stand against these forces of darkness because if you don't stand against those those forces they will overcome you eventually stand therefore having girded your waist with truth with what truth there's something I love about the Word of God it is so simple it is very simple a lot of times we read this word and we say wait whole whole body armor of God what do you mean Where, where's the armor but the Bible is saying us that the belt of the belt of truth what is truth it is the Word of God Jesus says I am the way the truth and the life the Word of God is truth you want to put on that belt spend time here wipe off the dust out of your Bible and spend time here and you will find yourself with that belt but not only that it's saying here having put on the breastplate of righteousness the Word of God says that he who knew no sin became sin that we may become the righteousness of God in other words in order for you to carry the breastplate of righteousness you must give up your sin you must confess your sin you must lay it down you must let go of it so that you can obtain the righteousness of God because if he who knew no sin became sin that you and I may become the righteousness of God then that means that the moment Jesus took upon the sin of the world I became righteous in the eyes of God therefore in order for me to carry the breastplate of righteousness I must live a life of repentance I must live a life where I begin to confess my sins before God and when I confess my sins before him I have the breastplate of righteousness when I spend time in my word I have the belt of truth and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace the gospel of Jesus Christ the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ what he did for you on the cross of Calvary having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel the Word of God is a light to your path the Word of God is the preparation of the gospel of peace peace when you read the Word of God when you prepare yourself with the gospel you will obtain peace that is one of the armor that is an attribute of the armor of God peace by what the gospel and it says here let's pay attention here this is this is amazing what Paul says here above all look at your neighbor and say above all you're telling me there's something above the belt of truth there's something above the breastplate of righteousness there's something above the preparation of the gospel of peace look at what Paul says here 
above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one I wasn't going to share this but let me go ahead and share it I was here at the church and I was in prayer and I was feeling the presence of God and I was going deep deep into prayer thanking God praying interceding for for my loved ones and I felt such a peace such joy and I said okay let me go ahead and get some rest now it was like three in the morning and I went to sleep and the moment I went to sleep I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me he said Andy there's a demon I said Holy Spirit where and the Holy Spirit responded saying behind you I immediately got up and I began to send fire I began to war in the spirit I began to pray against those demonic spirits and I felt peace I said okay it's time to go to sleep you know got to get some rest it was like four in the morning so I you know I went to sleep and then another attack God opened my spiritual eyes and I saw an eight-foot demon standing right next to where I was sleeping immediately I got up and I began to call on fire I began to call on fire and I began to pray and wage war against this demonic spirit now at this point I'm kind of tired I'm sleepy I've been warring all night demons keep on coming what's going on right and so I I felt peace I felt the presence of God I said well let me sleep let me get some rest now perhaps it's it's over with right and I had a dream there was this heavy attack it almost felt like a ton of weight was on top of me to the point where I was completely oppressed like there was something heavy heavy on top of me it was a very very horrible attack and I woke up and the moment I woke up everything was distorted I was like days out and I was like whoa the first thing that came to my mind I didn't even send fire I didn't even pray I got up I said Holy Spirit what do I do keep in mind I've been warring all night I've been using the fire of the Holy Spirit the blood of Jesus all of these things I have been doing all night long but yet for some reason I still keep on getting attacked so I said Holy Spirit what do I do at that point I'm like I just want to sleep you know Holy Spirit what do I do and the Holy Spirit said Ephesians 6 12 so I grabbed my small Bible and I opened it up for we wrestle not against flesh and blood and it began to talk about the whole whole armor of God and I began to read it and read it and something that stood out to me the most was this above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy so I stood in prayer and I began to use faith faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen I had faith that the moment I would finish my prayer everything would go away I had faith that my prayers were being were being effective against the enemy the Word of God says that works without faith is dead works prayer is a work and if you don't have faith to back it up believe me it will not work faith is above all faith is everything you have to understand that the Word of God says that if you have faith as small as a mustard seed you can say to this mountain be removed and it will be removed faith has power faith is able to change your situation faith is able to change your circumstance and Paul is letting us know above all take that shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy you would think that a sword would quench the fiery darts of the enemy you would think that perhaps a punch in the face would quench the fiery dart of the enemy but the Bible says that faith is able to quench that fiery dart faith is your belief the belief that your prayers are being answered the belief that your prayers are effective the belief that you are seeing everything as you are praying against the enemy faith is above all taking the shield of faith 
and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit with which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit I read this after that attack I read this and it blew my mind because a lot of times we read this and we just it passes over us we don't un, we don't truly try to comprehend or understand what it really is saying we read it and we're like wow that's awesome we were not against flesh and blood but when you truly read what it's saying it says you're praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints resist the devil and he will flee perseverance is an attribute to resistance when you persevere you're moving forward regardless of what what's coming to you 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 keep on going and you keep on going and you keep on fighting and you keep on praying with all prayer with all supplication and you keep on doing this with faith believe me you will see results and you will see answer our war is not against human beings our battle our struggle our problems in our daily lives it is the enemy it is his fallen angels that's who we war against that is our true battle amen so now that we know that our war is against not against flesh and blood how do we defeat and overcome the enemy if we can all turn to the book of mark chapter 4 verse 35 i repeat mark chapter 4 verse 35 mark chapter 4 verse 35 if we can all stand for the reading of the word hallelujah mark chapter 4 verse 35 i read in the name of jesus on the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in a boat, in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let's clap our hands for the reading of the word. Hallelujah. Now we've all read this before. But like I said, sometimes we read it and we're like, oh cool. He commanded the sea and the wind to stop. But we have to understand what truly is going on in this scripture. The word of God isn't here just to be here. The word of God is written to teach us something, to show us something, to give us a revelation that the disciples of Jesus we're not able to receive at that moment, at that time. Amen. Verse 35 says, On the same day when evening had come. Look at your neighbors say evening. When evening had come. So we know that it's late in the day. It's past afternoon. It's evening time. And it says, On the same day when evening had come, he said to, he said to them, his disciples, Let us cross over to the other side. If we see the context of this scripture, it talks about Jesus being before a multitude, teaching the people, and speaking to them in parables. Keep in mind, he did all of this throughout the day. So now it is evening time. It is close to the hour of darkness. And he is saying to his disciples, come, let us cross over to the other side. And it says here, now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm. Look at your neighbor say, great windstorm. 
arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling but he was asleep in the stern asleep but he was in the stern asleep on a pillow and they awoke him and said to him teacher do you not care that we are perishing then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm the way that we can defeat the enemy is by faith and proclamation the word of God says in the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony their word of the, the word of their testimony what is the word of their testimony it is the word it is the words that they are speaking testifying of bearing witness of Jesus Christ it is the words proclaiming Jesus Christ it is the words proclaiming that you have partaken of the Holy Spirit that you have partaken of the knowledge of truth and the Bible says that they overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony when you stand up against the enemy you begin to speak against him you begin to proclaim against him you begin to use the power of life and death in your tongue against him why because you bear witness to Jesus Christ you bore witness to the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ you can testify you are a witness that Jesus Christ is alive that his word is truth that the full body armor of God is true that everything that God has given you the blood of Jesus the name of Jesus the fire of the Holy Spirit the sword of the Spirit every tool every weapon that he has given you you bear witness that it is true and you are able to speak against the enemy you are able to proclaim the truth you are able to proclaim that Jesus Christ is the way the truth and the life and if we read here the reason why Jesus spoke is because he wanted to cross to the other side he had something to accomplish on the other side you have to understand that Jesus came to do the will of the Father and that is all he came for he said what I see my father do I do also in like manner me and my father are one therefore he said to his disciples let us cross over to the other side why because there is something that I need to fulfill and accomplish there is someone or something waiting for me on the other side therefore let's go but something happened in the midst a great windstorm arose where did this windstorm come from did I not say to you that principalities are at work the Word of God says that Satan is the prince of the power of the air and as Jesus was crossing this this sea this water a windstorm arose therefore he was in a war he was in a battle at that very moment there was something that was opposing him from reaching the other side there was something that was causing that windstorm to take place there was something that was causing the waves to be victorious and and crash into the boats and begin to fill the boats but in the midst of all this trouble Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a pillow in the midst of all of this going on think about it you're crossing a body of water a huge body of water and keep in mind these boats were not modernized like the ones we have today these boats are made out of wood and believe me you're gonna want to wish that boat made it to the other side a great windstorm arose and the waves were crashing into the boat and it began to fill the boat do you know that when water fills the boat it begins to sink meaning that all of his disciples even Jesus including himself could have drowned could have perished so what did his disciples do they went to Jesus and they woke him up and they said Lord do you not care that we are perishing Lord do you not care that we are perishing meaning that they were on the verge of death meaning that they were on the verge of losing their lives because of this storm that was taking place then he arose rebuked the wind and said to the sea look at your neighbor said said to the sea what did Jesus do he spoke to the sea he used his words against that sea and he said peace be still and at that very moment there was a great calm a lot of times when we go through a storm we ought to also say peace be still 
we ought to also proclaim against that storm. We also ought to proclaim against that great storm, against those winds that come our way, against those waves that try to take us over, against that very thing, that situation and circumstance that tries to destroy us. You ought to speak against it and say, peace, be still. But something that's greater than that is faith. Because the reason why Jesus spoke and said, peace be still, is because his disciples were afraid and they woke him up. If not, he would have been remaining sleeping. If not, he would have kept on sleeping because he had faith already. See, Jesus said, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Wait, hold on. So you're telling me Jesus is rebuking his disciples saying, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Wait, aren't you supposed to call on Jesus when you're in trouble? Jesus, you would think that all of this is going on and you would be the one I'd go to. Perhaps you're going to, through a circumstance or a situation and you're crying out to Jesus and you're crying out to him and you're imploring for him and you're begging for him. But Jesus told his disciples saying, why are you so fearful? Where is your faith? So Jesus is saying, don't cry out to me. I've already given you what you need in order for you to go through that storm. I've already given you what you need in order, you, in order for you to overcome that battle, in, or, in order for you to overcome that circumstance, that situation. And it is your faith. Your faith. Jesus was showing an example to his disciples that in the midst of the storm, you could be sleeping simply because of the power that is found in faith. Faith is greater than your words. Faith is greater than your words. You know, you can't speak unless you have faith to back it up. They feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? There is something that they didn't understand. But I thank God because now we have received the revelation of what the disciples did not understand. It has been given to us to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. It has been given unto us to know how to wage war against the spirit, how to walk through that storm, how to overcome Satan. It has been given to us to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. I don't know about you, but Jesus is worthy to be praised because of that. I thank God I thank God that he has given us the knowledge of the truth of his kingdom. I thank God that he has given us every tool, every power, every weapon to wage war. I thank God that he has given us the gift of faith to move mountains, to turn situations around, to turn circumstances around. Meaning that no matter what you are going through, you can find yourself in a pit. You can find yourself in, in the very bottom of that pit. But your faith will pull you out. Your faith will pull you out of the verge of death. Your faith will pull you out of drowning. See, the Bible says that Jesus commanded Peter to walk on the water. And, and Peter began to fear. He had faith because he stepped onto the water and he began to walk. But fear crept in. The enemy will fight your faith. Because the enemy knows that that is the tool that you are able to use that will quench his fiery darts. That is the tool that will overcome every scheme, every wile, every operation, every, every agenda, everything that the kingdom of darkness has planned against you. By faith, you are able to destroy it. That's why you find yourself doubting sometimes. That's why you find yourself in the midst of prayer and, and, and there's this thought in the back of your mind and you're asking yourself, does God really hear me? Are my prayers actually working? When I send fire, what is really going on? You have to understand that the word of God says the just shall live by faith and not by sight. You, if you live according to these eyes, believe me, everything that you do will be in vain. Why? Because you are using your natural eyes to try to understand the spiritual things. The word of God says that the just shall live by faith and not by sight. In other words, you have to use the eyes of faith. When you pray, when you send fire, you have to see the fire come out of your hands. When you use the blood of Jesus, you have to see the blood of Jesus over you and so shall it be because as a man thinketh so is he you have to understand that you have power and authority you have faith in the inside of you 
faith is the greatest weapon the reason why we are all here today the reason why we have partaken of the holy spirit the reason why we are able to receive this word it is because you have faith because if you didn't have faith you would be at home right now but you have faith you had faith that you would come here and receive something that you were expecting from God. You had faith that perhaps you would receive your breakthrough. You had faith that perhaps you would receive your deliverance, your healing, your change, your transformation. Everything has to do with faith. The reason why we believe that Jesus Christ was crucified and he rose on the third day, it is because of faith. Amen. If we can all go to the book of Mark chapter five. We're almost done. Mark chapter 5. If we can all stand for the reading of the word. Thank you, Jesus. To you belongs all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. Hallelujah. I read in the name of Jesus. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him a, out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. Hold up, wait a second. Hold up. So you're telling me that Jesus reached the Gadarenes and he crossed that, that body of water. And the moment he stepped out of his boat, there met him a man that came out of the tombs. We're talking about a man that was, that was bound with chains and shackles. No one could tame him. Think about this. A human being could not be tamed. A human being could not be chained up or even shackles couldn't hold him. The reason why Paul said be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might is because when you try to rely on other things to hold the enemy, it will not work. You have to, you have to go to the power and the might of Jesus Christ in order for you to see answer and solution. The same way that those human beings tried to bind another human being with chains and shackles, but it would not bring solution. It would not bring an answer he would break those shackles he would break those chains why because they were using another source of might they were using another source of power and it didn't work against that demon possessed man a lot of times in our daily lives we try to find other sources of happiness other sources that will fill that void that emptiness in the inside of us perhaps you just want to leave you want to go to another state all by yourself because you think that if you just leave everything behind perhaps you will find peace well let me tell you something that the spirits that are here the principalities that are here will follow you wherever you go you can go across the world and you will not find peace you can try other things you will not find peace why because there's only one source be strong in the Lord in who in the Lord and in the power of his might don't be strong in the things of this world. Don't be strong in doctors or physicians. Don't be strong in mental health institutions. Don't be strong in psychiatric doctors. Don't be strong in therapists. You won't find peace there. You will only find peace in Jesus Christ. Let's continue to read. Verse 5, it says, And always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. He did what? He ran and worshipped him. We're talking about a person who has his dwelling place in the tombs. A person that's completely demon possessed to the point where he's cutting himself with stones. And he would cry out day and night in the mountains. And people would hear his cry. People would hear that there is a man who is troubled in this area, in this region. But yet the moment Jesus stepped into the Gerardines, this, this person ran and worshipped Jesus. He fell before Jesus. The moment Jesus stepped into the land he ran to Jesus and worshiped him 
And it says here, and he cried out with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, come out of the man, unclean spirit. So you're telling me, someone who was able to break chains, someone who was able to break shackles to pieces, someone who was able to cut himself with stones, someone who would cry out day and night in the mountains, someone who had his dwelling place in the, in the tombs, who, who couldn't even be tamed, he couldn't even be bound. But yet, here we have him before Jesus saying, I implore you, by God, do not torment me. You guys missed that. I implore you by God, do not torment me. We're talking about a person who couldn't be bound with chains. We're talking about a person who couldn't be bound with shackles. We're talking about a person who couldn't be tamed. But yet before Jesus, he said, I implore you, I beg you, do not torment me. A lot of times when we go to a, through a situation or circumstance in our lives, when we see trouble ahead of us, when we see the storm surrounding us, when we see our enemies closing in, trying to attack us, trying to discourage us, trying to make us doubt, trying to kill us, because the word of God says that Satan is here to kill, steal, and destroy. There are three objectives that the enemy has against your life to kill you, to destroy you, and to steal from you. Sometimes what you need is Jesus to just step into that situation. Sometimes all you need is Jesus to step into that circumstance and you will see that turned around. You will see solution. You will see an answer. But you won't find it anywhere else. But only in Jesus. Verse 9, it says, Then he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Also, he begged them earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, send us to the swine that we may enter them. So they're begging Jesus, saying, send us to the swine. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. I mentioned that ever since the creation of this world, ever since you were born into this world, there has been a war, a battle for your soul. Because our war is not against flesh and blood. The flesh wages war against the spirit and the spirit wages war against the flesh. I want to let you know that this life, all it is is a war. It's a battle for your soul. It has always been. Every situation, every circumstance that you have found yourself in, it is for your soul. The enemy wants your soul. But look at this man who had a legion, 2,000 demons. But yet, he would wake up every single morning. But yet, he would live to see another day. Why? Because of the mercy and the grace of God upon his life. It is a war against your soul. And the moment the enemy possesses a person, that is only the beginning of your death. That is only the beginning of your destruction. Because what they try to accomplish is by possessing you. What they try to accomplish is taking over your mind, taking over your heart. I want to let you know that the moment the enemy infiltrates your mind, he goes for your heart. And the moment he infiltrates your heart, he has you. But not fully. Because that's only the beginning. When the enemy takes you away from Christ, when the enemy makes you lose your faith, he doesn't have you. He has you the moment you leave this earth. He has you the moment you no longer have breath in your lungs. But I want to let you know that no matter what situation or circumstance you find yourself in today, as long as you have breath in your lungs, as long as you have faith as small as a mustard seed, that situation, that circumstance can change and turn around completely. Amen. If we can all clap our hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If we can all stand and we're going to begin to pray. We're going to pray. And all we're going to ask for is faith. That's all we're going to ask for because that's all we need. Faith is all we need. Faith that the word that God has spoken over your life will be accomplished. Faith that the prophecies that you have received will be accomplished. 
faith that whatever God has spoken to you that it will be fulfilled and it will come to pass faith that you will move forward faith that you will excel faith that you will succeed faith that you walk in victory faith that you are forgiven faith that you are justified faith that you are redeemed faith that you are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ the word of God says there is therefore now no condemnation for, the, for those who are in Christ Jesus why because of faith Whatever you are going through, I want to let you know that faith is your answer. Do not doubt. Do not give up. Do not give up. Never give up. Always keep on moving forward. Always walk by faith. Why? Because the just shall live by faith and not by sight. There were times where I would say to myself, I would, I would speak that word over myself. I would say, the, faith, the, the just shall live by faith and not by sight. And then in the back of my mind, but what if I'm not just? So how can I walk by faith if I'm not just? But I need faith in order to believe that I am just, that I'm justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Faith is everything. Faith is able to turn your situation around. So begin to pray at this moment. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, increase my faith. Empower me. Strengthen me by the power of your might. Lord Jesus, create in me a new mind. Create in me a new heart. Lord Jesus, only you can help me. Only you can save me. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe in you. I believe in the crucifixion. I believe in the resurrection. I believe in the finished works of the cross. I believe that you paid the price for me. Give me faith. Give me faith. Help me to walk out my faith. Help me to overcome the enemy by faith and by the word of my testimony. Lord Jesus, let my life never be the same again. I ask you to uphold me with your righteous right hand let your Holy Spirit fill me let your Holy Spirit lead me and guide me into all truth Holy Spirit here I am Holy Spirit I believe in you I believe in your word fill me take over me have your way in my life have your way in my heart in the name of Jesus Amen. If you feel like this message touched your heart and you're in a place where you need to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ, I encourage you to come up to the altar that you may rededicate your life to Jesus, that you may return to your first love because the word of God says that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Today is given, but tomorrow is not promised. You know where you stand spiritually. You know if you have fallen short of his glory. You know what you have done against God. But today he is giving you grace. And he's giving you the opportunity to renew your covenant with him. To rededicate your entire life to him. If you are that person, come up to the altar. So we can pray for you. By faith, as Jesus stepped out, out of the boat into the Gerardines, as Jesus spoke to that storm, he did it by faith. In the same manner, you ought to use your faith to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. Step, take that step of faith. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you, Father, for your sons and your daughters. I thank you for your people, O oh God. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you heal those that need healing, Father, that you give breakthrough to those who need breakthrough, O oh God, that you fight for those who are oppressed, O oh righteous God, those who are going through troubled times, those who are being tormented at night. Father, I ask you to vindicate them. I ask you to fight on their behalf, Father. Your word says that no one can come to the Son unless the Father permits it. 
O God of Abraham, if we have gone outside of your will, if they have stepped outside of your will, I ask you to draw them to Jesus. I ask you, Father, to draw them to their first love. I ask you to draw them to their answer, their solution, their salvation, their hope, their joy, and their peace. Father, I ask that you draw them. Draw them to Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let's clap our hands for Jesus in this place. Come on, you can do better than that. Clap your hands for Jesus in this place. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's clap our hands one more time for Jesus. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Were you guys blessed? Oh, come on, talk back to me. Were you guys blessed? Amen, 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 amen. You know, he preached a powerful word, and he went back to his post. What a mighty God we serve. Amen, somebody. What a mighty. How many of y'all know God could use a cameraman? Oh, come on, man. My God. So those that are sitting here, don't get comfortable. Because God could use you too. Amen, somebody. He's just looking for a willing vessel. So he could pour his spirit. And use your amen. Let's clap our hand one more time. Tomorrow is come on. Tomorrow is tomorrow is. Listen, if you got plans tomorrow, cancel your plans. Pastor say, Amen. It's going to be powerful. I don't want you to miss. Amen. We've been uh, we've been promoting this conference for the past three months now, and tomorrow is our first day. Amen. We have speakers coming from different places, and I am super excited. Amen. Amen. So mark your your calendar tomorrow. Be here. The door is going to be opening at six thirty. Be here at 6.30. We're starting at 7, but the door will be open at 6.30 for those that want to come earlier. But we're going to start at 7. Amen. Amen. So I'm so excited. I hope I can see all of you guys tomorrow. Amen. It's going to be amazing. Amen. Let's all stand. If you're here, before we close, if you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus, amen, if you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus, and you feel a pull in your heart to come and give your life fully to him, I always want to make this call uh, to let you know that he's here for you. And if you're here, you maybe never given your life to Jesus, and you say, hey, I want to dedicate my life to him. Amen. I want to pray and believe God with you. Amen. I always tell people here, we're not here to embarrass nobody. We're here to love on you. Amen. Because Jesus first loved. In order for you to love somebody, in order for you to love somebody, amen, Jesus had to first love you. We don't even know how love is until we met Jesus. Amen, somebody. I used to tell people, people that say, I love you, Pastor Glow. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because you don't even know what love is until the creator of love shows you what love is. <laughs> Amen, somebody. You know, there's a lot of, I mean, I remember, you know, let me just run it back a little bit, you know. <laughs> The most popular word we like to use in our generation is love. And a lot of times we use it with agenda behind it. 
We use it because we want to receive something from it. But the true definition of love is what Jesus did. Amen, somebody. I don't attach love with emotions because love will fail you. I'm talking better than your amen. Amen, somebody. I don't attach love with emotions. Amen, somebody. I attach love with what Jesus did. Because his love still remains the same. From yesterday, today, and forever. So if somebody say they love you, tell her, I love Jesus. And if, in order for you to love me, you got to love. Amen, somebody. Because if you love Jesus, you're going to treat me right. Ah, oh, y'all quiet in here. Amen, somebody. I had some people that I grew up with. It was my dog. You know that word, dog? It was my dog. I started loving Jesus. They started backing up. I'm like, yo. They used to tell me, man, I got your back. You my dog, man. We riding for life. I accepted Jesus, and I've never seen him ever since. Now, how many of y'all know that Jesus will get you disconnected with a lot of people? Amen, somebody. Because when true love steps in, it reveals. When true love steps in, hey, I mean, it takes control. Amen. So don't lean too much on what is offered. Lean on the one that is given. <laughs> Amen, somebody. I learned to say this. Don't fall in love. Grow in love. Because when you fall, you may not just get back up. Mandala bakosa. Some of y'all falling in love. God is saying grow in love. I want to grow. Is pastor helping somebody to... Grow in love. My musician back there said, amen, pastor. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So I want to encourage you guys to be here tomorrow. Amen. Our very own spiritual mother, Mama Seraphine. Some of y'all haven't heard her speak in a minute. Amen. So I want you to be here because you're going to be blessed to hear her speak. Amen. You're going to be blessed. Amen. I receive a lot of her teaching. I'm blessed. Amen. Amen. I'm highly favored. Amen. And you're going to be? Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Spirit of living God, I thank you. I thank you because you're faithful. I thank you for speaking into our hearts, Father. Father, we just don't want to be hearer of the word, but we want to become doer of your word, oh God. That this word will remain in our hearts, Father, that we will meditate this word. And we will apply this word with our lifestyle, oh God. And Father, I pray, oh God, that, that you will get the glory and the honor because you deserve it all, Father. Father, I thank you for the lives of your servant. Thank you for Andy for being a vessel, for being an instrument, and allow you to use him according to your will, Father. Father, I pray, oh God, every virtue came out of him, Father, you will release more, Father. Father, you will pour more, Father, that his cup will overflow. Father God, revelation will come within his belly. Father, I pray that everything that he would touch, let it be blessed in Jesus' name. Father, I speak the blessing of the Lord upon each and every person that's in this place, Father. They could have been anywhere at any time, but they chose to be here, Father. And because they chose to be here, Father God, and I believe that they left this place with something, which is you. Amen. 
I give you the glory and I give you the honor. Cover each and everybody's vehicle as we're going our separate ways to our homes until we meet you again in Jesus' name. Amen.